Hello children. Welcome to another exciting, exciting Sunday service. I hope you're excited to be here today. Yes, I know you are. Well, let us quickly go for praise and worship. But before we do that, let us pray. Close your eyes. Yes. In Jesus name. Father Lord, we thank you for being here today once again. We are happy and so grateful, Lord, that we are here to fellowship with the brethren, to learn, to give you praise together as one. Father Lord, receive all glory, O Lord, as we give you praise and honor you with our dance and leap offering, our thanksgiving, O Lord. Father, Lord, even as we go further into the service after now, we are able to learn and do, O Lord, as you teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, put on your dancing shoes. Make sure you dance because I'm going to be dancing. And make sure you sing and clap. Don't sit down. Let us go.
guys welcome back how was that oh it was interesting i was jumping and dancing and singing and praising the lord i'm sure i'm one of the people that the lord will be looking at and be smiling mm, my daughter she's doing well and hope you are going to be one of those people that god will be looking at like mm, my son my daughter you're doing well okay let us go into the message of today so on the second part of the service we'll be hearing the word of god and today's topic like i mentioned earlier is nehemiah the dedicated leader what does it mean to be dedicated hmm. i'm sure you're wondering well wonder no more to be dedicated means to put your heart into something to focus on something to show care passion towards that thing putting your time and to you achieve the purpose it stands for instance like when you go to school you show dedication by waking up every monday early morning by six you're awake you're dressed up your mommy has you know putting everything for you to start your day and you go every day from monday to friday that's dedication and what is the end goal from that is that you are learning and at the end you get a certificate aside a certificate you would know all that have been taught in fact when you come to church every sunday that is a form of dedication now let's talk about it in leadership nehemiah was a great leader he was an incredible leader who was at this time of our story was in pasha he was working there when one of his brothers and his kinsmen Anoni came and told him about their place israel jerusalem now how it is in ruin it is destroyed and that struck him he was he was broken hearted because he remembered his home as a leader there and he prayed to god he went in and prayed do you know what why don't we go to the bible and actually read from the scripture nehemiah please make sure you're with your bible and also make sure there's a notepad beside you and a pen so that whatever you learn during the course of this service this sermon this teaching you put it down because we're not just listeners but we're doers of the word and if you don't put anything down you'll be able to practice it so we need to learn from the life of nehemiah so open your bible make sure you open it first person to get there nehemiah 1 verse 7. let's go quickly 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 are you there i am there and i'm reading from the international children's bible version so your own um your own translation could be different from mine but it's saying the same thing you understand right it could be different translation but it means the same thing so i'm just going to read quickly these are the words of nehemiah son of akalea i nehemiah was in the capital city of susa it was in the month of kislev this was in 28th year one of my brothers anani came from judah some other men with him and i asked them about the jews who lived through the captivity don't forget they were in captivity during this period yes they were captived in the land of persia nehemiah was in persia at this time as a captive but he was working under the king don't forget so they answered verse 3 now they answered nehemiah those who are left from the captivity are back in the area of judah but they are too much trouble and are full of shame the wall around jerusalem is broken down and his gates have been burned oh god that's so sad imagine you leaving your country or be taken god forbid that will not happen to us but imagine and you hear about your nation just like nehemiah nehemiah was broken hearted he, he felt moved with what was happening to his nation god's own nation and what happened why were they taken captive you will ask they disobeyed god they did things that god wasn't happy with and that's why he allowed them to be taken into captivity but watch what nehemiah did so nehemiah went back and prayed to god and we're going to read his prayer 
Yet the prayer your servant is praying to you is talking to God, to you day and night. I'm praying for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites have done against you, my father's family, and I have sinned against you. We have been wicked towards you. We have not obeyed the commands, rules, and laws you gave uh, your servant Moses. Remember what you taught your servant Moses. You said, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you come back to me and obey my commands, I will gather you, I will gather your people. I will gather them from the far ends of the earth and I will bring them from the captivity to where I have chosen to be worshipped. So Nehemiah know that God is such an amazing God that keeps to his promises. And Nehemiah reminded God of his promises. That if they come back and they are faithful, that God will bring them back from the ends of the earth. So Nehemiah prayed this prayer to God. And he also asked that God should help the king to be favorable to him. That the king should be kind to him so that he can permit him. Don't forget, he's a man under authority. So he had to take permission in order to go back. You understand? To build Jerusalem. And Nehemiah, do you know what he did? Nehemiah is so brave. So after he finished praying, the next day when he was serving the king, Nehemiah was sad because he was still burdened in his heart with what was happening in his nation. So he was sad when, while he was serving the king. And the king noticed and said, Nehemiah, you've never been sad. What is happening to you? And he said that his this people, his nation is in ruin. What does it mean to be in ruin? It's scattered, destroyed. That I would like to go back and rebuild this nation. And the king granted him his heart desire. I would like you to go and complete the story. Go and read the book of Nehemiah so that you learn more about what I'm teaching you. For the sake of time, I won't be able to tell you the entire story. So aside that the king granted his heart desire, remember he prayed. In fact, before he answered the king, he still prayed. Imagine muttering under your breath before you answer somebody. Maybe your daddy asked you for something. And, oh Lord, please grant me this thing. That's what Nehemiah did. And God answered him immediately. And he also asked one thing from the king, that the king should give him pay, uh, letters so that when he's traveling back, they don't disturb him on the, on the, on the road or on, the, on his travels. And the king granted him that request. He went back and he began to build Jerusalem. And while they were building, there are people that were troublesome, bullies. I, I, you've learned about bullying. Yes. So there were people that were troublesome that want to bully them, not to complete the, the building. But do you know what Nehemiah did? He prayed. Do you know the fun fact? Nehemiah is one of the books of the Bible that recorded the longest praying sessions. Yes, the longest prayers are recorded in Nehemiah in the Old Testament because Nehemiah was always praying. He needed God to guide him. He needed God to help him to complete the project. So he knew that prayer was important. So what is that thing that you need? You should keep praying. Don't stop praying. Praying is good. You don't need to scream and shout, jump to pray. You could just, you know, pray short prayers all the time anywhere everywhere you pray just like nehemiah did and because nehemiah was always praying he was able to finish his project he was dedicated he was passionate and aside that he was a praying man he was also a very wise man he was courageous so he asked the people that were building with him to hold a weapon on one hand and build with the other so that in case those troublesome people come they can defend themselves and with that the finish the project hallelujah the finish building jerusalem imagine you do you pray for your nation have you ever prayed for nigeria before have you ever prayed for your family your friends Anyway, anything that concerns you, pray. As a leader, leaders are made to pray. Leaders are made to lead others to Christ. Leaders are made to trust in God. They are made to follow God's direction, just as Nehemiah. If you notice in our story, Nehemiah never did anything without praying, without seeking the face of God, without asking for God to show him favor and asking for kindness from others. So I want you to be like Nehemiah. What did you learn from Nehemiah? 
I want you to quickly put down three things you learned from Nehemiah, from what I have taught you now. Just quickly write three things on your notes that you will do this week, next week, and all the time because you have to learn. While you do that, I want you to write the things you've learned from Nehemiah. I will give you some time and we'll have to say our memory verse. Yes. Our memory verse is something that you'd, you would have to learn to say without you having to go back to re read it. That's why it's called a memory verse. You memorize it. You try to remember it. You keep it in your heart so that whenever you need the scripture, you can always go back there and study and remember and know when you need it. Maybe your Bible is not with you at that time. You can always bring back the scripture to your remembrance and practice it and do what it says. Yes. So I'm sure you finished writing the three points that you learned from our, our, our great leader, our dedicated leader, Nehemiah. And if you've done that, now let's take our memory verse. So our memory verse is taken from Philippians 4 verse 8. Let's go. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely whatever is commendable if there is any excellence if there is any worthy of praise think about these things let's take it one more time let's go our memory verse is taken from philippians 4 verse 8 and it says finally brothers whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is commendable if there is any excellence if there is anything worthy of praise think about these things yes so don't just say it now do it think about whatever is pure so after now if you do if you still don't know it go back to Philippians 4 verse 8 and keep memorizing it till you know it. Now, my dear children, if you desire to be close to God, to encounter him more, to know him better, you should, I want you to say this prayer with me, to, re, to reconnect to God, to know him better. I want you to call jesus as your own so you close your eyes just before we take the closing prayer we'll take this prayer you put your hands on your chest close your eyes and let us pray lord jesus i thank you for being my lord and my savior i honor you today and i call to you to come into my heart let the holy spirit be made manifest in me Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I know that you've died for me and you rose again. And now you have set me free from sin. I am set free. I am righteous. I am holy because you have given me your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Now let's say the closing prayer. In Jesus' name. Father Lord, we thank you for the one that have reconnected to you that have accepted you as a loved and savior we thank you lord for the word that we've learned we thank you lord we thank you for learning about nehemiah as a dedicated leader father help us not to be doers not to be hearers of your word only but do us as well help us oh lord to be good children to be great leaders to lead others to you to do the right things at the right time, to be passionate, help us to pray more in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Almighty Father. We give you praise for all you do for us. We are so much grateful. In Jesus' most mighty name, we have prayed and given thanks. Amen. Now the church says what? Amen. All right, children. Till next time, see you.